I wonder if Titania be awake. Then what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals who work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus's nuptial day, the shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break. When I did him a disadvantage take, an ass's no I fixed on his head, anon his thisbe must be answered, and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy, so at his sight away his fellows fly. Their sense thus weak, lost with their fears thus strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. For briars and thorns at their apparel snatch some sleeves, some hats, from yielders all things catch. <laughs> I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked, and straightway loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with a love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished, too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, a she must be eyed. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe? Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, has given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being o'ershoot in blood and plunged in deep, and kill me too. The son was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should a murderer look, and so should I. Pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, is bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What is this to my Lysander? Where is he? Oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. <laughs> yeah. Out, dog! Out, car! Thou hast driven me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? And hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, great touch! Now spend thy passion on a misprized mood. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood. Nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. I pray thee then. Tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? Ew! Oh, a privilege to see me no more! And from thy hated presence part I so see me no more, whether you be dead or no! <laughs> There's no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow. A debt that bankrupts sleep doth sorrow owe. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love sight. Then fate or rules that one man holding troth, a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood, go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. All fancy six years and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I charm his eyes against she to appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye, when his love he doth espy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. 
Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once rule one. That must needs be sport alone. Why should thou think I should ruin scorn? Scorn and derision never came in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep and vow so born. In their nativity, all truth appears. You do advance your cunning more and more. These vows are hernias. Will you give her o'er? I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind, now you give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine, to what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? When thou holdest up thy hand, oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss, oh! Oh, this fight! Oh, hell, I see you all are bent to sit against me for your merriment. Can you not hate me as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so. You both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears up in a poor maid's eyes. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia, this you know I know. But with all my heart, with all good will, and Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena, to me bequeath, whom I do love, and will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will thee none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guest wise sojourned. And home to Helen it has returned. There to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know. <laughs> Look, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Don't thy from thy eyes fight to take all the ear more quickly of apprehension make. Where is often terrible seeing sense? It pays hearing double recompense. Thou art not by my eye. Like Sander, found. Oh. My ear, I think it brought me to thy throne. But why unkindly did thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love, that would not let him by. Fair Helena, who more guilds tonight than all you fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seekest thou me? Can't this make thee know that hate I bear for thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this false derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent when we have kid the hasty foot of time for parting us? Oh, is it all forgot? And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, it is not maidenly. Our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul, and tender me for sooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? I understand not what you mean by this. I do. Persevere. Counterfeit sad looks make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport, well carried, shall be chronicled. But fare you well, tis partly my own fault, which death 
or absence soon shall remedy. Wait, stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent, sweet. Do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee by my life, I do. By which I will lose for thee the proven false that says I love thee not. <laughs> I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come! Oh, Lysander, where to tends all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou bird, thou bye thing let loose, or I shall shake thee from me like a serpent. Oh, why are you grown so rude? What change is this sweet love? Thy love? Out, Tawny Totter, out! Loathe medicine, hated potion, heads! Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you! Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll trust not your word. What? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll harm her not so. What? Can you do me any greater harm than hate? Hate me? What news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? Am I not as fair now as I e'er were? Since night you loved me, since night you left me. Oh, why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid! In earnest, shall I say? Aye, by my life. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing to her. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love, fair Helena. Me? Of question of doubt, be certain nothing to her. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love, fair Helena. Me? Juggler! You! Canker blossom! You thief of love! What? Have you come by night and stole my love's heart from him? Fine! Hey! Have you no modesty? No maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet. Why, I, that way goes the game. <laughs> now I see that she has made compare between our statures, that she has earned her height, and with her, Personage, her tall personage, her height pursuit, she has prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? <coughs> Speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but my nails can reach unto thine eyes! I pray you go Though you mock me, let her not hurt me. Let her not strike me. I was never cursed. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Oh, lower heart again! Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels? Never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius, I told him of yourself unto this wood. He followed you, for love I followed him, but he hath chid me hence and threatened me to strike me, to spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so that you will let me quiet go and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why? How is it that hinders you? <laughs> A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. <sighs> Be not afraid, Helena. She shall not harm thee. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school. And though she be but little, she's fierce. Oh, little again! Oh, nothing but low and little! Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Uh, Let me come to her house! Get you gone, you dwarf! You minimus of Henry Knockgrass made you feed, you acorn! You are too officious on her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest to try whose right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jaw. You, mistress, all this glory was not long for you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. 
No longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands and mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. Oh! I am amazed! I know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest, or else committest thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far, blameless proved my enterprise that I have anointed in Athenian's eyes. And so far am I glad it so did sort as this there jangling I esteem sport. <laughs> thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi there, full Robin. Overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from thence all error with his might and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When next they wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll do my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready, where art thou? I will be with thee straight away. Follow me then to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou runaway, thou coward, art thou fled? Speak! In some bush, where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookest for wars, and yet not come? Thou recreant, come, thou child! Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice, we'll try no manhood here. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. It's filling as much lighter heel than I. Fall faster, faster, he did fly. That fall in my dark, uneven ground. Here will rest me. Come thou gentle day, for if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and avenge the spite. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? Thou runnest before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, thou mockest me. Thou shalt by this dear, if ever I thy face by daylight see. Go thy way then. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, weary night, how oh, long and tedious night, abate thy hour. Shine comforts from the east that I may back to Athens by daylight from these whom my poor company detest, and sleep, which sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye, steal me a while from my own company. Yet but three, come one more, two of both kinds makes up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Oh, never so weary, never so in woe, but dabbled with dew and torn with briar. I can no further carry 
no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desire. Here I will rest until the break of day. Oh, heaven shield thy standard, they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb shown that every man shall have his own. In your waking shall be shown, Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Take no chance, God may spin it, baby. And go from in a trance, cause your love is better. Any love I know is like thunder, lightning. Where you love me is frightening, and I cannot, 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 Girls and I are going to take about a 10 minute intermission.